Welcome. Psalms chapter 86. A prayer of David. Okay, we're back to David. And we're going to look at, as it says, it's a prayer of David. It's, it's a <clears throat> testimony of David to what God has, is, and what he's doing. And again, it's found in the Psalms. Psalms is a, a, a song book. It says, bow down thy ear. Man is lower than God. God's in heaven. We're here on this earth. And it's kind of, I mean, if you, if you look at it real quickly, it's kind of arrogant for David to say, God, you know, bow your ear to me. Or anybody speaking. And that's not the arrogance of David saying this. Say, God, you're, you're so high. You're so wonderful. You're doing so many things that are important. I mean, he's feeding a bird in one place and attending a funeral of a bird somewhere else. He's keeping all things active out in the middle of, of a solar system that we'll never visit. And he's hearing the prayers of this person, the prayers of that person, and he's listening to the, his praise over here, and he's listening to somebody griping, and complaining over here. I mean, and to me, bow down thy ear. And I said before, a couple of times, it's, it's amazing how many body parts are in the book of Psalms. And the rebel to the point is, we're talking about God, so it's a holy ear. We're asking God in his holiness to bow that ear. And give me audience, we're going to see in a moment. O oh Lord, that's God. Hear me. I, you know, step down, come a little closer to me, God, but hear me. For I am poor and needy. I don't know if this song was written when, when David was king, he was a shepherd boy or military uh, soldier of King Saul's army. Later on, about to die. But we're all poor and needy. And we are living in a church age where we say as a church, we're rich, we're great, we're wonderful, fantastic, blah, 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 blah. God says you're wretched, miserable, poor, naked, and blind. It's a humbling down of David. So before you say, bow down thy ear, O Lord, you know, you know, the arrogance of David, it's not that, because Lord, I'm poor, I'm needy, I need your help. And you're the only one capable of doing it. Preserve is to keep. When you make preserves or you buy a preserve, it's something that's been kept up. And to be used, preserve my soul. David's saying, take my soul and let it be forever. Let it be to your honor and glory. For I am holy. He says he's poor and needy. Then he says, I am holy. David was a man after God's own heart. Now, whether this is before or after <clears throat> the sin of Bathsheba and Uriah. O thou, my God, my God, not your God, not their God. David saying, my God, save thy servant. That trusteth in thee. 
And for someone to say, I am holy, in the Old Testament sense, well, Lord, I've done what the law has told me to do. And there are times in David's, I'm going to say, younger and adult life that he couldn't have done what God told him to do. He was on the run from Saul. In the very place where he is supposed to be, like Jesus, they were looking for him. And that there is a feast that the modern Bible changes, it says, not now, but he ends up at the feast and they're looking for him. We know he's supposed to be here. So maybe even those times David was there like Jesus. And he puts his trust in God in his prayer, I have a need. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. David had a daily prayer life. And we see that throughout the, 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 the conduct of David's life. Whether he's on the run or he's in the palace or however he is. David is a man that's after God's heart. David is a man that prays. Am I safe? David's a man that sinned with adultery. David's a man that sinned with murder. And David was a man that sinned by taking the census. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Prayer is, is, is an important asset that God has given us. But prayer is not the only defensive weapon we have. We have a sword. We have a shield. We have shoes. We have a helmet. David's sword is not complete. What books did David have? He sure didn't have the, the, the complete books of the Psalms. He's writing one right now. David don't have Proverbs. That was written by his son. David don't have Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon. That was written by his son. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. That's all later. Never mind Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and all the writings of Paul. And yet one of the things that the law said was a king was to take the law and write a copy of that law. And yet we find nowhere where any king had done that. And yet Joab's personal testimony of David, when he's going to send a man to David and say, Uriah is dead, and if David quotes scripture to you, then you're going to quote scripture. Abimelech. Well, wasn't there a woman that cast a millstone? So it's quite possibly that David was one of that men that copied the law. <clears throat> Do I lift my soul, my eternal being, whoever I am, what I am? My eternalness, I lift unto God. For thou, Lord, and look, it's not all capital. Verse 1, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital E. Verse 5, capital L, small o, small r, small b. Verse 4, the same. David making errors. David's 
and is going to be or is king at this point in time, David is subjecting himself to a ruler that is over him and as a human ruler. Not as God, but God, of all the rulers of the world, you're my Lord. You're the one I'm going to take care of. And also the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital G, Jehovah. He says, art good. Well, Solomon, his son, and Paul is going to quote Solomon later on to say, there is none that doeth good. And yet God always does good. God never sins. God never makes a mistake. The Bible will record to us that God will never lie. That's good. And ready to forgive. If the world today, if there would be pockets of people in the world today afraid of coronavirus, if they were get together and say, Lord, we fear thee, we seek thee, we want you. We want you to be our guidance. We want you to take care of us. And we have sinned against you. It is because the sins of man, why we have the, this viruses and, and judgments of you, that I am a sinner and you are long-suffering you are holy enough, yet there's anger with sin, and yet the love of God. If I were to come confessing my sin, thou art righteous enough to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all right unrighteousness. And plenteous in mercy. Mercy is what stepped in and saved our soul. It is not what we have done. It is not what we cannot do. It is what God has done. And all them that call upon thee, not just me the David, not me the one who's after God's heart, not the one that God said, okay, I want him to be the the leader of my people. But anybody. And what David says is before it has been written that the love of God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, and there's what David's saying, whosoever will believe, whosoever would confess, whosoever will want to get right with you, God. Before they die. All that call upon thee. And David writes, Whosoever calls upon the, the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will turn nobody down. Give ear again. Listen, God. There's some people who... who dealing with some people they must not ever had a trying time in their life and these people that listen to joe and all that other nonsense and how wonderful and great your life is going to be in christ and you're going to do wonders and great things beyond all natural occurrences of the prophets and the signs and the miracles your your love of god and what you do for god's gonna be you'll never have a moment in your life where you be praying to God for something. God, are you listening? Are you hearing me, God? Will you listen to me, God? And I'm at a point in my life right now, personally, let me speak about what I know. I'll pray to the Lord and say, Lord, yep, I ask for help and you're helping me. But still, Lord, I need more help. The Bible says, ask the Bible says, I receive not because I ask not. Lord, you're taking care of me in this field. Everything's going right, but I'm still asking because James said, you know, if I don't ask, I'm not going to get. Glory to God. 
On the other hand, Lord, why aren't you listening to my I'm about this one? Lord, your Bible says this, <clears throat> and you haven't done that. Are you listening? And I think when, when dealing with people over the years since I've been saved in 1987, I don't know if they've ever come to this point in their life where, where God has been silent to them, and you see it in the prophets. You've got to know that David, throughout his life, there are times and we see it in the song, God, you listening to me? Come on, Samuel anointed me in, with oil in front of my brethren. I got my brothers as a testimony, God. My dad was there. What is this nonsense that I am not on the throne yet and that evil, wicked, vile man Saul is changed? God, where are you? I guess people haven't had that in their lives. With some of the foolish comments they make to people who do have those events in their life. And it just shows that when it comes to the power of prayer, God answers in three ways. Yes. We love that one. No. And then, right now, not now. Not now. And there is a time in our prayer life that we come to the point God's not saying no and he's not saying yes, but wait. And we're crying out to God like David. Hello, where are you? And God's up in heaven, I'm listening. And we, and we are down here like, God, you're not listening. You guys like, I'm listening. Just, I got it all control. We don't know what tomorrow holds, and we don't even know if there's a tonight. But when people are brought up with this prosperity, and people are brought up as immature Christians that never grow and are retarded, by choice, they don't ever come to these points in their life. God, where are you? I have nowhere where you are. Because they haven't come to God in serious prayer. They have something else that answers their prayer. A bank, a friend, or something, or someone. So he says in, in Psalms 86, verse 6, uh, yeah, 6, Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer. Attend. Come. I'm inviting you. Be here. That's what the word attend means. You know, when you went to school, it used to be, we're going to take attendance. And the teacher, however they did, but the classes I were, they call out your name, you say, here, you raise your hand, however the teacher wants. Uh, and, you know, Stiley, here. Okay, Stiley's here in the classroom. Lord, here. Okay. Making sure you're here. Making sure you're in the same place I am now, Lord. And he goes on to say, attend to the voice of my supplication. God, I'm praying. I'm supplying to you. Are you here? God, you here? I'm here. Are you listening? Yes, he is. In the day of my trouble, and that's that's a popular word of David because that's something that David always had. And we also see it always applied to Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee. What Christian has not called upon God in the day of his trouble? Many delay their call of God in the time of trouble, and they go through their phone book. And somehow Almighty God is not in the A section of their address book. He's in the Z section, or not the number section, way in the back of the book, as I get, you know, my friend, my mother, uh, the pastor, uh, or the bank, or 
okay, I've, I've exhausted my my references. I have exhausted my friends list. I have exhausted all human me. Okay, now God, come and help me. David's like, hey, I'll pray to the Lord right now in my trouble. Dave, and we, as the trouble's beginning. <laughs> For thou will answer me. And if God's going to answer me, bow down to ear, Lord, Lord, where are you, Lord? Are you attending? And when we go through our trials and tribulations, we know God hears us. We know it. But that impatience that we are and the patient that God is God's in no hurry and he heard us and he's going to answer yes he's going to answer no or he's going to answer not now and that not now is Lord where are you Lord I'm okay I'm doing fine you're okay you're fine Among the gods, small g-o-d-s, the Bible acknowledges that there are gods out there. The Bible does not say, well, you know, there's no such thing. No, there's Baal, there's Asterisk, there's Balaam, there's, Ast uh, there's all kinds of, of gods in the Bible. Solomon found himself over a thousand of them. Paul speaks about the, the stupid idols. And when he means stupid idols, they can't talk and they can't hear. But there are gods out there. David's running through the fields of, of, of the Philistine. And they got Dagon. And David runs to this group of people and they got their gods. And amongst the gods, there is none like unto thee. You know, we have America, and America is state, in God we trust. Which one? See, in God we trust is not a capital G, it's a small g. Because we got Catholic gods, we got Baptist gods, we got Presbyterian gods, we got Islam gods, we got Mormons gods, we got uh, Hindu gods, we got all kinds of gods. But we don't have the God of the Bible. Very few Americans who, who are born again. We have the God. They have gods. And we acknowledge that. But there's one God above all gods. And in times of trouble and times of praise, I don't go running to a minor God. I go to the God. And I thank the God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And not God the Son that we, we eat and drink the body of God, that God and Son. That's another Jesus. And even Paul warns us that there's another Jesus, there's another gospel, and there's another spirit. There's God, small g-o-d-s. But there's yet one God that suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. That's God. Yet in the realm of Babylonian, in the realm of, of Greek and Roman mythology and, and all the nations that have gods, they have a God that died. And their God that died comes back to life. And he dies again, and then he comes back to life. That's not God. That's a God. We need to understand. And when we have on our monies in God we trust, which one? You would be a fool to think that everybody that touches a dollar bill that are honoring the God of the Bible where the dollar bill, when God we trust, ends up in the collection plate. The $10 bill ends up at the fast food restaurant. The, the God we trust on that. 
and the $20 bill goes to the gasoline for your car throughout the week, and then the $50 bill goes for lottery tickets and other, other kinds of nonsense, and they all have in God we trust. And the $100 bill ends up in your mortgage or your car payment. And now you look at all the different bills and the denominations that say, in God we trust, which one ends up at church? In the collection plate for the service of God. Good old George. I'm not saying that's for everybody. See, few people... God of their money, the, the, the Benjamin Franklin all ends up in church, but not for many. Because they have another God. And where you spend your money, where your money goes as your priority, is who your God is. When I settle down and I do my checkbook, and I got money that comes in. The very first thing I make out a check for is for giving to the Lord. That's the first one. God first. Because that's the priority. There is none like unto thee, O Lord. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. What God out there has created all that we see and all that we know. Well, sure not the evolution God, because there's no facts in the evolution God, or the monkey or Darwin or whatever it is. The Big Bang. That's a God that's, that's nothing. Yet my God is always eternal. My God's always present. And my God was there yesterday. My God's there today. And he'll be there tomorrow. That's the difference. The works. What God has designed coronavirus? Oh, the Chinese. Now, see, now you got your eyes off the wrong place. All right, the Chinese may have made it, or whoever, we don't know, but who allowed it? God. I mean, even the insurance companies, a tornado comes, it destroys your house, sadly. What is it called? It's called an act of God. It's not called an act of goddesses. It's not called an act of a president. Not the, called an act of the king or queen of our nation. It's called an act of God. And a lot of people give the glory to God. It was Mary. No, it wasn't Mary. We're losing the fact right now with, with coronavirus. Oh, the scientists are doing great. The first responders are doing wonderful. And we're, 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 get, we're licking this thing. And we're not thanking God. And we're not giving God the praise and honor. And God will bring another judgment next. And if you don't believe that, you have never studied the book of Exodus. Now, we may not be going through the water turning to blood. We may not be going through the... the, the, the Frogs coming. We may not have the lights or the baran and all that. But God has his things. I just read today. Someone posted that. I forget what, which one. The middle states of America. They're having dust storms. And bad ones. And there's been tornadoes coming through. And earthquakes. And they're going to get worse and worse and worse. And the people are going to turn from God and turn from God and turn from God. And when you study the book of Revelation where the church is gone, there are unsaved individuals that God will be bringing judgment upon the Antichrist and those that receive their mark. And they're still not repenting and they're still not getting right. And the Antichrist is a God, small g, O D. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna wear a mask and protect myself from coronavirus. Why not put the power of prayer and ask God to protect you? Because you can wrap yourself up in a mask and gloves and and Lysol and spray your underarms with with, with that uh, with that hand cleaner and you can just just wash yourself all filthy. And if God wants you to get coronavirus, you're going to get coronavirus. 
There's a king in the Bible that God said they drew the bow and they shot at a venture and it went between the harness and got the guy in the, in the heart and killed him. The guy was wearing armor and God said, I don't care. I want him dead. He's going to die. There was a king that God sent Isaiah and said, go prepare your house because you're going to die. The king got right. He repented to the Lord. And, and God said, wait a minute, Isaiah. Go back and tell him I'm giving you 15 years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As we're going to face these crises and they're not over. They're not over. Your conduct and your praise will design to who is your God. And I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to be harsh or anything like that. But the first responders, that's what they're paid to do. Okay? It, plain and simple. And you don't like it, that's tough. They're paid to do that. I can tell you right now, there are doctors right now. I've got an ear infection. I can't go to the ear doctor because they've closed their offices. And they're not making no money and they're, they're having problems and they'll probably get one of those loans. But you were not doing what your job was. Restaurants are closed. They're losing their money. Because the government. Well, <clears throat> I'm putting my faith and trust in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I seem to be doing fine. I go out there. I don't wear gloves. I don't wear a mask. And I get, I've get. i been finding the things I need with no problem. There have been times we've gone to the store and there's been no toilet paper there. I haven't had a need. And when our supply gets a little down, oh, wow, look. There's toilet paper. Let's get, hey, let's get, a, let's get an extra uh, 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 packet of... Uh, uh, a package of toilet paper and we'll bring it to church so somebody at church if they need it you see we we, we got the thing we need and we gave god the glory we'll get it out and we'll bring it to, for christians at church in case they can't get it that's giving god a need what what are the gods of the hoarder i get i get i get i get i get i get i ain't gonna give none and then i'm gonna sell them on on the, on the internet for an extremely amount of gods Small G-O-D-S, money, 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 money. All that chicken that went off the, sh the shelves, there's a possibility that that chicken has been tainted because a lot of these employees at these meat companies that are now closing, if not closed, have been tested positive for coronavirus. Get ready to market a beast. Christians will be gone. The rapture will happen before the mark of the beast. But there's coming a time that God said there'll be no business, no buying, no selling unless you get that mark. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved so you don't have to worry about that mess. Christians all say, oh, don't take this, 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 this shot. Don't get the, because it's got the, you know, the, the, the 666 and got the mark of the even if it did, it does not involve me. If that shot will, will help my family in the prayer of God, say, God, if it's going to help me, and if it has the mark in it, I will take that, that shot. I will get the, the shot to help my family be well. And when the rapture happens, whatever that thing is in my body, the mark of my body will fall to the ground as I go to glory. You didn't worry about the mark. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. How come you didn't get coronavirus? I pray to God, I took the, the shot. Oh, oh, the 666. The Bible says, I don't need to worry about the 666. I didn't trust in your God. I trusted in my God. There are people out there thanking God that their families are safe and their families are well. And their church may be open. And there are people out there afraid and giving the government the, the praise, giving the, 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 the medical field all the praise. They ain't giving God the praise. David says, amongst the gods, there's nothing like thee, O Lord, neither thy, 
there any works like unto thy works. God is the worker of the works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee. And that's also a second advent millennial passage. I believe that the new Jerusalem that's coming will be for Christians. I believe that the new earth that will come is for Israel. And I believe the new heavens, the new earth, uh, the new heavens, new heavens, I believe they're for the Gentiles. Those nations that, that when the book of life was opened up and their name was in that book of life, where do they go? I believe they get the new heavens, the outer space. The Jews get the earth. The Christians get New Jerusalem. And they'll be coming in and, and the healing of the leaves of the tree of life for the nations, not the Christians. And they'll be all giving glory and honor to God the Father. And shall glorify thy name. What name? The name of Lord Jesus Christ, the name of Jehovah. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is Jesus. That name is not a name of royalty, of human leadership. It is not the name of Republican. It is not the name of Democrat. It is not the name of nothing but the name of Jehovah and Jesus Christ. For thou art great. He said in verse 5, thou art good. And he steps it up. Thou art great. And doest wondrous things. Have you not read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Man, the, the widow woman, that oil and that, that meal provided food during the drought. Elijah's there by the brook and he's drinking of the brook and the, way, and the ravens brought him his meal. There were dead people who died and they come back to life. There's a woman who never had any relationship with a man and she gives birth to the Messiah. There's a man and woman. There's Abraham, Abram and Sarai and there is John the Baptist's parent and they're old and age and all that and they're able to produce a child. There's miracles throughout the whole Bible. One day, they come to Elijah. He's sitting down having a meal. They're, they're, they're eating the soup or the pot, whatever it is. And they, oh, no, there's poison in the pot. He said, well, bring me some meal. Puts it in there. All right, enjoy. Oh, Master Elijah, the water is terrible. It's bitter, all right. Put it in there. And the water has been made to drink. And there are yet still more prophecies of the wonderful great work of God yet to come in the tribulation period for those that have rejected God. We that are saved and are raptured go up to glory and we'll be watching all that mess we read in the book of Revelation. And then out of the book of Revelation at the end of the seven year period there is one group of people above all groups of people called the Jews that Jesus Christ will mount up on the horse with us to follow and we're going to go miraculously come down from the heavens to get them up and bring them into the promised land like Joshua did. And there'll be a group of people called the, the sheep nation that helps the Jews and don't even know what they've done. And Jesus is like, come on in with the, come on in, bring you in the millennium because you help my people. That's a God of wonderful, great works. John says in the last chapter of his gospel, man, if we were to record the books of all that Jesus Christ done, we only record his parcel of everything that Jesus Christ has done. Man, you would not be able to carry your Bible around. That's a wonderful working of God. What great works has Allah done? Ugh, nothing. Great, great prophecy of all the gods of the Indian people or India and Hindu. What, what great thing they done? Ugh, nothing. 
What great works have, have your God of your Bible style have done? Oh, let me sit down and start with Genesis and work our way to Revelation. The creation shows the great and wonderful works. I mean, this earth is 5,000, 6,000 years old, coming upon me 7,000 years old, and yet the moon has never crashed into the earth. I am 51 years old. I'm going to be 52 years old. Nobody has to plug me in in the middle of the night and unplug me in the morning to get going. You don't have to take me down to the garage and say, uh, here, here's my old man and you know, change his blood and change all his fluids. You don't have to do that with me. The Bible says I am wonderfully mar marvelously made. By what? By the creator God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the way. I will walk in thy truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. Unite, get together my heart to fear thy name. And all the world, all the world would declare that Jesus is Lord. Those that are lost. All those that are saved would declare that Jesus is the Lord. Why the Lord for, for those that have done what God's told them to do? Because there's one Lord of their life. The lost man, listen, that lost man, Lazarus, I mean, not Lazarus, the, the rich man that went into hell, he didn't change his conduct. He goes into hell with all his gods. Problem is, his money, his God didn't go with him. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God. With all my heart, with the heart, man, please, unto righteous. And I will glorify thy name forevermore. With the heart, man, please, unto righteous. With the mouth, confessions made unto salvation. There's Psalms 86, 20, 12. There it is found in Romans chapter 10. There it is. Who you love is who you're going to speak about. I can't but shut up about Jesus. I cannot but speak the Bible. For great, there's that great again, is thy mercy toward me. All that God has done to prevent my soul to go to hell. The Bible says that, that the, the, the back of Jesus Christ was, was like plowers plowing the field. The body of Jesus Christ was so marred it didn't even look human anymore. That God forsaking Jesus Christ and turned out and Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus himself went into hell and deposited my sin. How wrong, wrong, how tormentful is hell that we preach about that Jesus went into hell and deposited our sin. He didn't go in there with an air conditioning unit. He suffered and died according to the scriptures. For grace thy mercy toward me, thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. David, how dare you mention something that modern churches don't say hell. She know. Can't say hell. There is no hell. David believed in hell. Jesus mentioned hell. John, writing the book of Revelation, mentioned the lake of fire. He mentioned hell. Oh, well, there is a hell. And you'll go there by rejecting God who made hell. The one that made hell said, hey, hell was made for the devil and his angels. Who made hell? God. Oh, God. The proud are risen against me. Nowhere in the Bible is pride ever good spoken. God does not have pride. You know what God says when it is pride, which he doesn't have? It is well done. Well done. Man in the world in sin, they have pride and they are against the Christians. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. They're ravishing in a moment. Oh, how great we are. How wonderful we are. How great and all that. 
Joseph, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And the assemblies of the violent men have sought after my soul. They want Christians dead. They want children of God dead. Why do they want Israel gone and wiped away? Because they are a nation of people under God. And we can't have that. We can't have a God that says there's only one group of people. We cannot have a God that says that land is their land and not our land to do it our pleasure. I have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, art a God, amen, full of compassion. He's long-suffering, the Bible says. He does not want the lost man. He does not want those that reject him to continue to reject him any longer. He wants them to call upon the name of Jesus. He wants them to be in the family. He wants them to come out of hell smelling like the brimstone and be clean and change the garments to get the new spirit, get the new body, and to dwell with him for all eternity. It's not God that throws you into hell. It is you that takes the swan dive into the lake of fire that burneth forever. You again, you when you go into hell in the lake of fire, you do it at all great points that God has done to stop you from going to the place that God does not want to. He said, This place is made for the devil and his angels. I have done all that has needed to be done not to go. He says, a fool that has said in his heart that there's no God. And gracious, long-suffering, there it is, and plenteous in mercy and truth. That's God. God killed those babies. God wiped out those people. The God storm killed those people. Oh, the people are dying with coronavirus. No, the wages of sin is death. And if God gives any relief and God gives any victory through any of the plagues and judgments and troubles and problems and situations, it is to God and his glory, and yet man will give the glory to small G-O-D-S. Oh, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant. Man, with the strength of God, what you can do. Save the son of thy handmaid. Thine handmaid. I'm going to say that David's saying that his mother was saved. Show me a token, and Jews require a sign. Show me a token for good, that they which ate me may see it. God, I want a miracle. But I don't want a miracle so how great I am. Those enemies over there, God, I want them to see something that they had to say. How did you get out of that? What on earth happened to David? That for the Christian, the world looks at you, you know, you're sitting at your desk, you're doing your job, and you got the same problems they got, and you're just sitting there, you still got joy in your heart, they're looking at you like, what is wrong with that guy? That, that guy's a fruitcake. No, I ain't a fruitcake. I've got the loving fruit of the Holy Spirit. I've got the love, joy, and peace. The spirit that does not go to the children of wrath. The spirit that does not go with the world. And the lost people look at you like, wow. And that's a testimony to them that there's something different about you. There is something about your God that you proclaim and are witnessing and telling people and speaking and, and glorifying and you got the weird music and you got that one book and, and you, you got the slogans at your desk or the bumper stickers on your car or you go to church three times a week and sometimes you go seven days and it's, it, it, you've got something that I ain't got in my God's small G-O-D-S. And be ashamed. We ought to have people who have other gods and statues and idols and images and 
aids of worship and all. They ought to be looking at their thing, you know, when they pray those beads, oh, look at those beads. Like, you guys don't answer like that guy does. Or you may answer some of my prayers beads, but I don't have the joy in my heart that that guy has. And that guy may be praying to his God and his Bible, whatever he's praying to. And, and, and things are not getting better for him. They're getting worse. But he's got the joy. Things are working well with me, but I ain't, I ain't doing so well. I got to call and get another prescription. I got to run down to the package store and get some more booze. That guy does it without alcohol. That guy does it without drugs. That guy does it without sex. That guy... My God doesn't do that. And you know what's a shame? They will see your God working. And they will still reject your God, the Bible, that working and doing for their cheap garbage. A couple times in the Bible, the, the, the enemy comes in and their God just beats their butt. They leave their gods. And the idiots pick them up and serve those gods. David had that happen one time. He took those gods and he burnt them. Because thou, O oh Lord, because thou, Lord, has hoped or helped me and comforted me. And that's long before the Holy Spirit, the comforter. Was there comfort given to the Old Testament saints? Absolutely. It just didn't stay with him. So here's a prayer of David. And if you know David, that guy, he had a he had a miserable life. He had a bear and a lion come after him. He did right for the king of Israel, and the king of Israel gave him wrong. He was on the run, he was on the chase. He got he finally got the kingdom and he got fell into wicked sin. And then he, he got the kingdom and his own children rebel against him. And yet with all that, David still says, God is a great God. God's a good God. And I'm still praying to that God and God's still taking care of me. And David did not refer to drugs. David did not refer to alcohol. David didn't go see a shrink. David trusted in God and there were times when God when David came to God and prayed to him God where are you God hey God you want to give me your ear here for a moment please come on God listen to me I got troubles I got problems will you come in and God sits up in heaven he says I hear you not now well I'm praying to God I <clears throat> and nothing seems to be happening. Well, he didn't say a yes. He may be saying no. Or he may be saying, okay, but not now. When a child comes up to you, your little boy comes up to you and says, hey, dad, he's got your razor in his hand. Dad, me need to shave. No, not now. When we come, you know, he's a teenager and a young man, he comes up to, and, you know, he says, now you need to shave. You know? When your 10-year-old daughter comes in, I want to drive the car. No, not now. 16, 17, 18, all right, now we'll teach you how to drive. The child comes up to me, he's got a bottle of poison. Let me, no. Not now and not later. Give me that. No. Mommy, can I have a piece of cake after dinner? See? Never ever think that God is not listening. He's listening. And listen, I'm in problems right now. He's listening. And people will get on you. Oh, you know, you're, you're losing faith in God. You don't have no faith. No, it's it's a, David's doing the same thing I did or doing. We're doing the same thing David done and did. God, are you listening? And he is. Keep praying. The Bible says you, you receive not because you ask not. 
Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. And Jesus didn't say it was going to be answered right then and there, did he? You don't have that promise. It may take a while. To God's glory.